Hi, this is Jim Willie from the Hat Trick Letter, found on www.goldenjackass.com, and you are listening to Run to Gold. Or the Run to Gold.com podcast. It's been a couple weeks, and I'd like to report we finally got the site back up and working. There's been quite a bit of changes lately uh, behind the scenes. We have moved to a faster server to handle all the growth. Uh, thank you, everybody, for sharing the site with your friends and family. There's that easy little email link, and you can email articles to people. And I guess lots of you have been using that because traffic has uh, grown quite a bit. And so in order to make it faster for everybody, we moved it over to a faster server. One of the unfortunate side effects of that was... Uh, one of the files for the podcast feed somehow got lost, and so uh, we had to get that fixed, and it took a little bit longer than uh, I wanted it to. Anyways, the podcast is back up and running. Hopefully this is the first test episode. We'll see. I am currently working on an article about uh, the ETFs. I'm sure that both of you, that you've read the two articles that I've written about them, Uh, another problem with the GLD ETF, and then a problem with the GLD ETF. I recommend you go back and review those because what I found is a Deloitte & Touche report, and one of the sentences from it is, uh, quote, if the proposed ETF tracks a commodity, it buys or borrows certificates of ownership of that commodity. That's full sentence, full quote from this research report on them. And so I'm going to be uh, teasing this out and talking a little bit more about the ETFs. And so if you haven't read those articles, I recommend going back and reviewing them. I'm also uh, going to be tying this in with an interview that Dr. Nuriel Rubini of New York University, uh, where he was asked, when you say stay away from risky assets, many people hear that and think, aha, gold. Rubini responds, I don't believe in gold. Uh, period. (laughs) Gold can go up for only two reasons, blah, 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 blah. And, I mean, what does he believe in? Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy? I mean, you got to be kidding me. Uh, I don't believe in gold. I mean, you can hold this thing in your hand. Uh, But maybe maybe he's going along with Descartes, you know, who who didn't believe in anything. Uh, The the complete doubting theory, to which I'd kind of respond, you know, if you if you doubt everything, if you don't, you even exist, then, I mean, why do you even open the door? <laughs> I mean, come on, let's get practical here. And so, Nuriel Rubini, he says, I don't believe in gold. <laughs> I mean, that's funny. So, I mean, what do you believe in? Illusions, like the Federal Reserve Note dollar? You've, it's such a joke. And perhaps what he's saying is, I don't believe in gold as money. Uh, or as currency. And yes, it is true, gold as a currency uh, does not have too much market share. We don't use it in all that many ordinary daily transactions. But that can change because of things like gold money. Uh, But to not believe in gold as money, I mean, that's absolutely ridiculous. We've got billions of dollars of physical gold that trades hands on the LBMA every day. So, I mean, this is a big market. The gold market's a big market. Uh, sure, it's not as large a currency market as uh, the yen or the euro, for example, but it still trades billions of dollars a day. And so that's a lot of liquidity. And with things like gold money, you can have ordinary daily transactions of gold where you can buy and sell uh, sands of soda, or you can buy my book. For example, I've sold several copies of The Great Credit Contraction uh, for platinum even, I mean, uh, and gold and silver. So I mean, it is it is a money, and it is currency. And to hear uh, Dr. Rubini say he doesn't believe in gold, it just it reminds me of, of all these economists and central bank apologists and fiat currency apologists that really miseducate people. I mean, it's like he's just a witch doctor, <laughs> you know, just hopping around on one foot. And distracting you away from the basic economic laws that are at work and the monetary science that's at work. And it's not that complicated. I mean, in my book, for example, it's, uh, I very quickly and easily explain it, and it changes paradigms because it really is simple, and where we're going is pretty simple. And, you know, 
When the final collapse does come, when there's this systemic breakdown, a nonlinear event, when this black swan of a dollar collapse fly, uh, flies in, and we've been in the dollar collapse as it is, but I'm talking about something like Bear Stearns, you know, overnight, boom, it's uh, worthless, which could happen. Hopefully it doesn't. But if that does happen, and if it's a nonlinear event, then in all likelihood it's going to take everything else down. And so if, when this fiat currency system does fail, gold will rise again, you know, and it's going to rise whether or not these apologists like Nuriel Rabini, you know, witch doctors hopping around saying, I don't believe in gold, I don't believe in gold, uh, it's going to rise in spite of them. And the reason is that the market won't allow a fiat system to come back. When the system collapses, the regulatory authorities and the monetary authorities will be on the defensive. And we see this with the Federal Reserve's general counsel being grilled by Alan Grayson. We see this with the SEC being grilled about where all the bailout money is going. And so when, when this loss of confidence happens in the market and in the fiat currency system, they won't be able to do more of the same. I mean, it's not going to get replaced with an Amero or an Obama Mo or a whatever you want to call it, an SDR. You're not going to have more of the same because they're going to have to do what they've always had to do throughout history. They're going to have to show us the money, real money, money that's an asset, not a promise, not a, li- you know, not a liability of a central bank. And gold is no one's liability. And, you know, it's going to be a generation or two or maybe even a thousand years before uh, they're able to get away with another swindle like this. So it's going to be uh, quite amazing. And sure, we have a lot of uh, witch doctors with PhDs in economics or whatever hopping around saying, I don't believe in gold. It's not money. Uh, You can't eat it. I mean, how stupid is that? It's not like you can eat a Federal Reserve net dollar either. I mean, hello. So anyways... I wouldn't be dissuaded by this because it looks like we have credit dislocations coming in the market and uh, gold is a lot safer and more liquid than all of those. And it is cash. (laughs) It's not like cash, like a Federal Reserve note dollar or a money market fund that just got its treasury guarantee withdrawn. So I'd recommend everybody, you know, hold on to your bullion. We're going to be in for some wild rides. And November is usually very strong seasonally for gold. So we could see quite a rise in the price. Anyways, I think you'll enjoy this article that I'm working on uh, when it comes out. And I hope that this test of the 54th episode of the RunToGold.com podcast works out just fine. Thanks for listening. This is John Rubino from DollarCollapse.com, and you're listening to Run to Gold.